Morning, everyone. This is Andrew from Chainlink. Uh, very excited to have you guys here this morning. I'll be your MC for the first few presentations. Today, we're kicking things off with Patrick McNabb from Secure Data Links. SDL has been working on Chainlink Oracle reputation and is also one of the first ever Chainlink Community Grant Award winners. Patrick, please tell us about all the cool work you've been doing. So I'm Pat, and I'm a part of the team that are working on building out Chainlink Oracle reputation. And uh, yeah, in the next 15 minutes, I'm just going to be giving a bit of a brief overview of the solution that we're building and that we've been granted by the Chainlink Grants Program to continue building out. So evidently, as we've all witnessed, the Chainlink network is solving the issue of delivering reliable off-chain data on-chain to be used by many different applications. All of these transactions and their relevant interactions are all on-chain and retrievable, but until we developed reputation.link, it was relatively difficult to analyze and, and observe the Chainlink data. Initially with reputation.link, we set out to provide a reputation score for the network and build a platform that complemented that reputation score. But uh, as we continued to develop this out and we realized that there were so many small steps that needed to be taken in order to first display the data and then give it a little bit more context. So, what we've been working on and are continuing to implement is just a simple data streamlining service and a front-end experience that allows users to monitor, visualize, and really contextualize all the Chainlink-related data. So Chainlink has grown quite rapidly with the more recent growth of DeFi to be securing more than $2.5 billion with its data feeds. Uh, not only is the value increasing, however, We've also observed that the general network activity is also increasing. With more oracles joining the network, more users of the contracts, and more transactions being written on chain to update new data feeds. What we're seeing as well is that some DeFi customers and DeFi protocols are wanting to provide users with more transparency and uh, easier to consume information regarding their chain link integrations. In some cases, DeFi protocols, they're providing a bit of a click off to a certain contract, an Oracle contract, and, and that suffice so far. But then this is really where reputation.link steps in and can provide that additional context for developers and users of the Chainlink protocol uh, in order to help them understand the value of secure feeds. So the beauty of Chainlink is that it is so general purpose. Uh, you can have the same data feeds being used for so many different applications in finance, insurance, payments, gaming, uh, many others. Chainlink users and use cases are continuing to expand. And with that reputation.link, it's going to help to visualize which users are interacting with certain feeds and what those interactions look like. As well as being use case agnostic and generally composable, Chainlink's not only limited to Ethereum, it can obviously be used by so many other different blockchains and for which uh, reputation.link will be uh, going to provide the analytics on those other blockchains as well. So the major current use case for Chainlink uh, with DeFi, we believe uh, will continue to be the, the driving force behind Chainlink growth. And because there is so much value being secured by some of these Chainlink data feeds, it's very important that protocol developers and users can be doing due diligence and, and really assess the price feeds and individual oracles that are supporting those feeds in order to ensure that they're comfortable and really willing to proceed with the security guarantees involved in producing different types of financial agreements. So reputation.link, it, it really helps to unpack the life cycle of the supply chain of a chain link, chain link data um, feed. So one thing that we're really pushing into is visualizing how different DeFi protocols and smart contract applications interact with Chainlink. So uh, this will allow for visualizations of, say, the time at which uh, Synthetix has read a certain contract, uh, and then where that price data gets fed into their contract system to secure certain types of contracts and a certain amount of value. Protocols can then really point their users to a tool which visualizes these Oracle interactions and really provide a, a user with a level of trust and guarantee that the data that they're using is secure. So in the example of an Ethereum US dollar feed, what you'd like to see maybe is, is how many and which Oracles are securing that individual feed. 
if there have been any deviations or failures in that feed and, and sort of which oracles are the ones that are underperforming on them. So you're able to make those decisions from then on. What you can do with reputation.link then is you can go through the transaction history for specific data feed contracts and determine at an Oracle layer, uh, the timestamps of transactions, the, the value that gets reported, as well as the different transaction hashes there. Uh, you can also view a price feed over time for that individual reference data contract. So going back until the contract was deployed, uh, Chainlink currently, they provide the data on feeds.chain.link over a 24 hour period. But uh, with reputation.link, you can get all historical on chain data for that aggregated price feed, just providing that extra layer of context. Uh, and then getting a bit more granular as well, users, they'll have the ability to visualize an individual oracle's answer over time and see how it compares to other oracles and the aggregated price. So from this data, we'll be able to determine an, a level of accuracy or a deviation ratio from the aggregation price as a measurement and then use that for different types of analysis. So going a bit uh, deeper at the Oracle level, you can get a fairly holistic overview as to the quality of, of individual Oracles there. So um, Oracles currently aren't exactly on the radar for developers that are integrating Chainlink. They're more focused on the feed itself and, and the reliability of the feed, which consists of the Oracles. But sort of as it evolves, we expect, uh, we expect that once service agreements are, are, are getting set up, you'll have smart contract developers that are wishing to select specific oracles for their service agreements and, and choose in order to ensure that they get the security guarantee that they're looking to pay for. So at an oracle level, you can really determine things like an oracle's average response time, their completion ratio in the entirety of their transaction history. So sometimes it's, uh, it's not always the oracle's fault that they fail to submit an answer on chain. What we've been seeing is that API providers, they can sometimes experience outages in their servers. Uh, what we've implemented is for the ability to check to see if it was entirely entirely the Oracle's fault that uh, they haven't sent a transaction on chain or if some of the responsibility may fall in on the data API provider side of things. Um, so we provide a bit of a simple uptime analysis on that front. Uh, I guess in that instance, the Oracle would still be considered responsible, of course, as they've selected that data provider, but from the insights that they can gain, they can update their provider relationships or uh, more ideally source their data on their own terms. So this could look like node operators connecting to multiple different centralized exchange feeds and, and inputs, ensuring that their connection to data is sort of completely within their own control or as much in their control as possible sort of further promoting the decentralization aspect. Uh, there are obvious risks associated with such an approach as not all node operators have the capacity to aggregate, but certain standards could definitely be implemented to ensure that it's achievable and potentially be a great benefit to the entire ecosystem. All of the data that you can see and find on reputation.link and, and that we'll provide going forwards, it's inevitably, inevitably going to be free, open source, and available to the entire Chainlink ecosystem via our API. Uh, the API currently, it's pretty limited in its offering. We're still building it out, but we're expanding to provide all the data that we're currently using, uh, allowing for anybody really to contextualize the data in any way they wish. So use cases here just could be uh, other ecosystem projects such as market.link who, who we're working in with and collaborating with. Uh, they can provide additional context on oracles prior to their selection on the market, as well as maybe individual node operators or oracles displaying their performance on their website if that data is worthwhile displaying, that is. So core's, core's main direction with reputation.link here, uh, it'll be, we're looking for the developers that are trying to understand the different integrations and the way that Chainlink's being used. Uh, they're wanting to understand Chainlink's end-to-end -end guarantees and, and really realize the associated security risks of integrating Chainlink into their protocol. Another target audience for us is, is that savvy DeFi, a smart contract user that's really looking for the extra security guarantee and, and to be able to perform that extra due diligence before they actually interact with a DeFi protocol. 
Uh, what we're focusing on being is the Chainlink Block Explorer. And what you'll see is reputation.link evolving into monitoring and, and visualizing all Chainlink activity. So whichever data feed contract you wish to analyze, whichever Oracle or whichever contract that's integrated Chainlink, you'll clearly be able to determine how the Chainlink solution interacts with the code base and see the whole supply chain of that data in real time. Uh, protocols are currently just saying we, we use Chainlink as an Oracle solution and we use them because they're secure. Well, how we see this evolving is that DeFi and, and protocol developers, they'll now be able to really point to the reasons that they use Chainlink on a per feed basis and really provide the users of their open source technology with the visualizations and the security guarantees that are implemented in their own systems. Reputation.link, it will be in place to capture and visualize the, the universally connected smart contract ecosystem that Chainlink is building. Uh, this will entail visualizing the, the quality of API providers, the Chainlink oracles that are associated with these agreements, reference data contracts, DeFi protocols and different smart contract applications. On all different blockchains, uh, reputation.link will be able to focus on. So we'll also be providing alerting services moving forwards for not only Chainlink feed users, but also for Chainlink node operators. Uh, DeFi projects will now be able to proactively respond to any errors or issues with the data feed going forwards. And then with the data that we visualize, they can, they can conduct a bit of a detailed post-mortem analysis to determine what went wrong and then ensure that they appropriately re-secure their contracts. Uh, same goes for node operators here too. Most currently run their own internal monitoring and, and alerting, but reputation.link for new oracles getting into the ecosystem will be able to provide this alerting to ensure that they remain performant. All the insights that you see on reputation.link are in real time and, and we do funnel real time transactions into the platform. So we're also continuing to develop out these tools to detect and act on specific mempool transactions. Uh, so mempool transactions that may contain erroneous answers to update a price feed, they, they can be flagged in real time. So allowing developers to put in place any security measure that they need to secure their feeds before a transaction is even placed in a block, the protocol can have that few seconds, uh, maybe up to 13 seconds within the block to uh, set up a system that might mitigate the damage that an erroneous, erroneous answer could have on their system. So we'll be monitoring Chainlink specific uh, transactions on multiple different networks. Ethereum is obviously where the majority of the transactions are currently, but over time Chainlink will expand to, ser to service whichever network demands off-chain data. So with the potentiality of a reputation system being built around and on top of the Chainlink network, Reputation.link will be able to be a provider of all Chainlink specific data that could be used to generate a reputation score. On the creation of service agreements, this ability to filter nodes via their performance metrics will be the key to creating secure protocols. Uh, in creating an environment where Chainlink nodes are able to be picked and Oracle networks are curated, utilizing all information possible to make the correct decision, it's very important. So this could consist of maybe how many oracles you'd like to leverage for security, what the average minimum response time could be, and if you want to set up a minimum job run requirement. On reputation as a topic, we're always interested in discussing the problem and engaging with the idea. So uh, we'd be thrilled to see people get in contact with us and sort of speak with us on the topic. Well, it's pretty brief, but thanks heaps for, for listening. Uh, I may as well mention there as well that uh, we're looking for a product designer and back-end developer to join the team. It'd be great if you had experience in the industry. Um, but yeah, we're really looking to execute on Chainlink Oracle reputation and nail the visualizations of the network. Um, so please get in touch. We're always looking to improve the service. So if anyone wants to have a chat with us, please reach out, jump on the Discord and, and the Twitter uh, at oracle.rep. And thanks heaps, guys. Thank you, Patrick.